challenge does this Georgia run to run offense provide for you guys? Well, it presents a huge challenge. On the best team we have um, played this year, um, great offensive line, great dual threat quarterback, I mean running backs, and a great quarterback itself. The receivers are um, very explosive. So just going to the week gonna be a great challenge this week. But we have to make sure um, we on our game this week. Uh, make sure the leadership really make sure everybody's focused and really ready to come to work this week. With with everyone talking about how how good this team is, what does Coach Saban do to keep you guys? Grounded and I guess in this bubble. Not, not even not not just Coach Saban, but the leadership itself. Because the leadership, we got we've been here before. Like we've been the best team last year and lost to Arbor. You know what I'm saying? Became and at that uh, also been the best team and got a um, you know what I'm saying a real dog fight with Georgia the last game. So just everybody know like we it's time to come to work. Like you could be beat any day. You could be the best team in the country and get beat, or you could be the worst team and win. So uh, it's all about men errors, all about the toughest team, who's going to run the ball on who. And it all starts in the trenches first. They got a great O-line, and we got a good defensive line. So we'll have to come to work. Given that that game was only 11 months ago, you know, and, and uh, the connections between the, the coaching staffs, how much familiarity is there? When you're watching film, do you see kind of, hey, that looks a lot like us? Um, it's, it's similar, but I feel like every, every school in the country really have the same plays, or the same inside zone, the same tendencies when it comes down to running back being deep and running back uh, in parallel. Now it's just about who can make the uh, less minor errors and who can be more physical to me. Like uh, Coach Saber always preached, we got to be the more physical team and playing Georgia, they're a physical team. And we got to come out and be a physical team also. So, What happened with your pinky? Oh, I just sprained a little bit in the um, Army game. Good luck. Like just how, just, just uh, how, how'd you do that? I got caught in two of uh, uh, our players, shoulder pad, the first player, the first deepest player in the game, and he just sprained, and I just got it just to you know what I'm keep it secure and stuff like that. Gotcha. Speaking of injuries, how's Isaiah doing? Uh, he's doing wonderful. He's uh, back on his feet, uh, doing great, doing drills, just uh, back to himself. So he's doing wonderful. We saw Terrell out there yesterday. What was that yeah. like for the defense, kind of have him back out there? It was a shot for me, because I ain't know no, but just, um, Seeing how hard he worked in the all season, seeing how uh, how much passion he played um, with, not play with, but how much passion he had on the sideline and stuff like that. It's just great to see him back on his feet in general. If he played this week, if he played uh, this year, or not, just to see a player like that, a uh, physical player, a uh, uh, dynamic player like that, uh, back on his feet after uh, ACL surgery. So it was just amazing to see him out there. You didn't expect to see him out there yesterday? No, I didn't know he was coming back. I didn't know he was Obviously, you had it happen last year with you know several guys, including Terrell. But how much of a boost is that, you know, personally and, and for for players on this team to, to to see that, to see him out there and do what he loves? Oh, it's a huge boost, just um, personality-wise, on um, the things he can come out on the field. Uh, but it's really not nothing he could do if he on the field or off the field to really like um, change the way. Uh, everybody thinks like everybody gonna come into that game, come into every game with that mentality like we gotta dominate our box. And if he on the field, he gonna we gonna want him to dominate his box also. So there's obviously gonna be a sizable Georgia following the game being in Atlanta. But do you guys consider that almost your home turf too, as much success as you've had in that town? Uh, it's really not about what home turf or nothing like that to me. Like it's really about going in and being a physical team. Like you can play. I'm saying anywhere for real, for you can play in the high school field, you can play just field is a field, like 100 yards, just, you know what I'm saying? So not really the crowd, not be a factor because the crowd don't really, you know what I'm saying, have nothing to dictate with the men areas on the field or the things that are going on on the field. It's still going to be a tough game, still going to be, you know what I'm saying, dumb enough front. Deron did a good job of stopping them in the middle mm -hmm. last season. What did you see from him in that game and how do you plan on kind of continuing that? Uh, I really seen like how he just um, played physical, how he played uh, explosive. Uh, just the same message came from Coach Saban from last year game to this game. It's gonna be a physical game. It's gonna be gonna have to be dominant up front at the defensive line and set a new line of scrimmage. So uh, he did that role. And so I expect you know what I'm saying everybody on the defensive line to do the same thing. My will, myself as well. Just like the linebackers expect us to do it, we expect everybody else on defense to do it. Nick is comp been complimentary of your ability to. Break down film and bring stuff. I guess that Thursday meeting, you, mm -hmm. you bring kind of your evaluations of, of 
little things that they do, uh, the opposing team. Can you give us an example of, of that, maybe from a previous game, and, and you know what that means to you to kind of have that role with this team? Um, I don't understand. I just know how to, I can break down film just myself, just by watching film and like. But don't you evaluate some? Uh, I'm trying to remember exactly how Nick phrased it, but you, know, you through the team meeting, I guess every Thursday, you, you're the one that presents like the, these are the tendencies that they have, and this is what you present to the defense. No. I don't present. I just know, like, I feel like, like, as I break down film, I know like different things. Just me knowing football, like, if the running back deep, the running back can't run the ball sideways because he's deep. You know what I'm saying? He got to get the ball going downhill because the quarterback can only, you know what I'm saying, hand the ball off certain ways. So if the running back to right next to the quarterback, he can only he can't go like downhill, but he had to make a curve. It's gonna be a too slow of a curve. But uh, just breaking down the film in general, like. I go. Uh, I just tell the team what I see. I just tell the defense what I see. Uh, the defense trusts me because you know what I'm saying. I've been playing so well. I'm a leader also, so the defense trusts me. If they take on uh, what I see, what I say. But sometimes I could be wrong. Like sometimes I can say, uh, if the running back and the child lineman, if he to the quarterback, he's not gonna. You know what I'm saying? Get the ball and come down here, and he end up getting the ball coming down here and hitting the a gap. Everybody gonna be like, dog, oh, Q, you told us. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> So it's just a lot of stuff that I can break down and see, but a lot of stuff, everybody, I'm just throwing my input, you know what I'm saying? With the, with the attention you've been getting, what's been the weirdest thing about being in the spotlight more? Uh, nothing really has been weird for me. I really haven't, you know what I'm saying, been in the spotlight, spotlight like that forever, but I'm just, you know what I'm saying, taking everything as a blessing to me.